Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. It's your boy Jesse Keegan. And your girl Fanny Lungo. And we are Fanny and Jesse. So today we're gonna do another reaction video. Before we even get started, I want to say thank you for everybody out there who's subscribing. You guys are really amazing. Keep on subscribing. We're gonna get to 30,000 subscribers very soon. That one I know. And I think you also know. So, um, yeah. So today we're gonna do Engineer Who Built Masjid in Navi saw a miracle from Allah. So without any further ado guys, let's get it. Assalamu alaikum dear brothers and sisters and welcome to Quran and Islam. We hope you're preparing well for your Akhirah. Brothers and sisters, if you have ever visited the Kaaba, the Haram and the Masjid Nabuvi, you can understand how beautiful and spiritual these places are. We feel emotional and connected and indifferent to worldly matters when we go there. Let's talk about the miracles that happened when these holy places were rebuilt and redesigned. The person who built the Masjid al-Haram and Masjid al-Nabuvi was called Muhammad Kamal Ismail. He was an Egyptian architect and engineer. Brothers and sisters, the person who gets to design and build the most blessed parts of the world, the Masjid al-Haram and Masjid al-Nabuvi, can he be an ordinary man? Allah had chosen and designed the whole process. This person was also no less than special. Dr. Kamal Ismail was the youngest one to graduate from high school in the Egypt. And then he became the youngest person ever to graduate from the Royal School of Engineering. He was then sent to Europe to receive multiple doctorates in Islamic architecture. He was the first person to take over the control of the whole design and rebuilding of the Harman Sharifain. Despite his excellence and degrees, and experience, he refused to take even a single penny for completing this lengthy, difficult task. Dr. Kamal Ismail said that why would he take worldly returns for designing the most sacred parts of the world? How would he answer back to his Allah? His whole life is an embodiment of Iman and faith. He had a small personal life and that is why he would spend most of his time in worship and ibadat. No doubt, Allah had chosen this person. He was over the age of 80 when he signed the contract of designing and rebuilding the Haram and Masjid Nabuvi. And after that, he spent his years working for the sacred places without any media coverage or spotlight. Not just the architect, the design and build of the Haram and Masjid Nabuvi are miracles in their own nature. The building material used here is the rarest in the world. If you have been lucky enough to visit these blessed holy places, you will know that despite the scorching heat of Saudi Arabia, the floor of the Harman Sharifain is cool to touch. This is because the white marble used there is a rare kind of snow white marble found in Lebanon. Dr. Kamal went to Greece and bought that rare mountain where this marble was found. It is known for its extraordinary shine and white color and thermal properties. It gets rid of the heat in the air and feels cool to touch on the surface. When the construction of the Masjid Nabuvi began, the King of Saudi Arabia asked Dr. Muhammad Kamal Ismail to use the same snow white marble. The marble he had bought for the Haram was 15 years ago. He wasn't sure if that company still had it. Anyways, he went to meet the executive and told him the story. As expected, the marble had been sold out completely. Dr. Kamal left the room, but just as a ray of hope, he asked the secretary to please find the person who bought that marble. She said, it is difficult, but you can drop your number and I will let you know if I receive any information. The next day, he received a call from the secretary. She had found the company who bought the rest of the marble 15 years ago. When he looked at the details she sent, Dr. Kamal was astonished. The company was based in Saudi. He immediately took his flight, landed in Saudi Arabia and went to meet the owner of the company. He told the whole story. The owner of the company asked his staff to check where they used that marble. Surprisingly enough, the marble was still there in their storage. For 15 years, that marble was waiting for Dr. Kamal to come and use it for the building of Masjid Nabuvi. 
He broke into tears, gave the owner of the company a blank check and asked him to charge whatever he wants to. The executive of the company refused to take a penny. Brothers and sisters, we are talking about the Masjid Nabawi, the mosque that Rasulullah Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam built with his own hands. This was the place which his she camel chose and this is the masjid in which the Khalifa Rashidin Hazrat Abu Bakr and Hazrat Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma put the bricks side by side equal to the Prophet's brick. This was the holy place where Hazrat Aisha and Hazrat Sauda radiyallahu ta'ala an had their homes. How lucky some chosen people have been to contribute to the reconstruction of this holy place where the hearts of the Muslims from all over the world come together, where thousands of Muslims come every year to rejuvenate their Iman and faith and get rid of their sins and connect with Allah and His Prophet ﷺ. This makes us extremely nostalgic and emotional knowing that this man has spent his precious experience, time and years in building the Masjid and Abuvi with full heart and passion. He could have taken other projects and made billions and left a lot of money for his coming generations. But Allah had chosen a man of faith and iman for the construction of this holy place. May we all get to witness the glory and holiness of Masjid Al-Haram and Masjid Nabawi one day. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss an update. Till next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is the video trying to tell us that the miracle here was that um, the two masjids would be rebuilt by someone who didn't ask for a penny? Yeah, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Was the guy Muslim? Yeah, I think so. From Egypt. I mean, to work. The architects from Egypt. To work for free is insane, especially for such a big project. Because imagine how much you'd make from it. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, I'm just think. I don't know. It's either the person was already. I don't want to say loaded, but maybe the person was doing more in life. Exactly, because look, if you look at this again, God, um, um, God does not give responsibility to someone who is not well enough to some point especially when you come to this kind of project because at some point you should believe yeah, god you know, gave you these projects because to handle, you know god god tried something from it maybe just saying maybe god tried to find someone and then he found an architect who is really experienced old enough he has well is well connected and he has already made an impact already so you know what why not use him to rebuild the masjid or whatnot so that's the work of god you know that's what the miracle is i think god cannot just go to any young man who is starting life you think so i don't think that would make a lot of sense because it would make again a lot of if sense. you're really young no, it will not make a lot of sense because it, it takes a lot of wisdom for you to even. I mean, if let's say if you're but just at, we at your twenties, what God can do exactly. Okay. But imagine God if you're at your twenties, to tell you something. I know, but again, in your ten twenties, you haven't experienced that much. You're not, you're an architect. You haven't even gone a mileage. You don't know how to do things. So it's not a thing of God doesn't go to. Yeah, God can go to a baby, but and whatnot. But God, um, but again, I think God also looks at things in a very rational way. Also, do you understand? Who should I give this? This man has been building for years. I think it's his time to approach him and build something that he will he will leave by his legacy. Do you understand? That would be his legacy. Yes, like something that he built through God's or something because if you look at the okay for a young guy then what you understand mm -hmm. then what, what do you mean if you're a young guy then what i mean if you're 20 years old you haven't experienced that much uh, you haven't accomplished that much and all those kind of things i think there's a reason as to why god chose him and exactly. the reason as to why he, god also chose the other guy age 
you understand? I think it, it does, man, man. If you look, okay. Uh, that's look your at the opinion. Bible. No, look. And that's okay. Look at the people who, who used to live back in those days. Moses, Abraham. Those are people who were chosen by God. Maybe they were old. Do you understand? Jesus wasn't old. No, he, st he was still. No, Jesus was the son of God, according to the Bible. And again, but the prophet. Then what does that mean? Do you understand? You can't use he's the son of God in this context. Okay, yes. Just just remove that. All I'm saying is this. If you look at the Bible, yeah, most of the people who are chosen by God were old people. People who have sin, they have wisdom. It's only few people like David. Look at David. David was messing up all the time. David was was sinning and then coming to God forgiveness. Sinning, coming to forgiveness. Do you understand? That's why According to my own opinion, God cannot just give someone that kind of task to a uh, to to someone who is young enough not to maybe try to accomplish that. Because trust me, it needs someone who is already has gone mileage and he has done that before and he has that, that connection and whatnot. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amy? Okay, but do you agree in the Bible most of the people who are chosen by God they are they are what? All the prophets. What? Uh, prophets, um, Moses, Abraham, um, all those guys. There are, there are a lot of them. Enoch. They are old people. Do you understand? I hear you. Yes. I know. That's, that's the point I'm trying to make. And then, other than the architect, there is the other guy selling the towels as well. He takes nothing. Yes, also, yeah. Also, that one, same thing. God spoke to him because he had the story. I think they Do really understand? appreciate it's that. It's because of his story, that's why he decided to, you know what? Yes, also, he was touched by the story and was like, no, no you don't need to. Because even the guy was like, he was saying, put any amount and I'll pay. The guy said, no. It's like, anyway. But it's insane to think about it, you know. You threw me off my thought. But anyway, what's meant to be will be because that's a specific towel that the, mm -hmm. they asked him to use, you know, and he found it, which is quite amazing. Sorry, what did you want to say? Hmm? You wanted to say something? No, no. Okay. I think so. Already. Any more comments? No, no. I mean, it's just interesting. I mean, when you look at it, like, this is something that it's... It, it's has millions I mean you, you put up you put in there like millions of dollars and whatnot so you even wonder who so to where was the money coming out from for the entire thing was it the one putting out the money or the community are the ones who just put because one thing about community Muslims they really what? I mean they to build the no I mean they can they came up with the amount of money or something the guy was saying, "Don't no problem. You don't need to pay me." That's just the so argument. what happened? It yes. doesn't mean that others were not paid. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Of course, you have to pay other people also. So who was paying those people? You know, the mm -hmm. community or what? But anyway, one thing I like about Muslim communities that they're united. If they need something done, they'll get they'll get it done. Exactly. That's what yeah. I was thinking. That's the point I was trying to drive yeah. to. Saying these people believe in their religion so much, they're willing to do things for free. Yes. You understand? Yeah. Um, and maybe that was his contribution. You know, I've lived life, I've enjoyed life, yes. I've made money. This I can do for free. Yes. So yeah, that's that. Let us know what you guys actually think. If there's anything you just have to let us know down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And we'll see you in. Our next reaction <laughs> video. <laughs> <laughs>